Hi everyone. So one of the most helpful resources you'll encounter for identifying plants for your plant collection is the Go Botany website, which is a website that was created by the New England Wildflower Society, which is one of the oldest and largest um, wildflower member societies in the country, actually. So it's a really great website. Um, I use it a lot if I have a plant that I'm trying to identify, and I think you'll find it useful. So if you go to um, uh, gobotany.newenglandwild.org, or you can search for Go Botany in Google, as you see I did, to bring up the website. This is the home page. And what you're going to be using are these advanced ID tools. Okay, so you're going to click on Learn More. Okay, there are two ways that you can use the um, identification tools on Go Botany. One is to use this interactive key, and then the one is to use a dichotomous key. Now, you guys um, are familiar with dichotomous keys. We did an activity the second day of class using um, dichotomous keys. But I think that for most of you, because you're new to botany, um, it might be a good idea for you to just start with this fully advanced interactive key. But I suggest that you play around with both of these. Um, depending upon your learning style or the way that you think and do things, you may find the dichotomous key easier than the interactive key. So try them both. But I want to show you how to use the full interactive key first. So click go to full key. Okay, so the um, first question it asks you, and there are many answers to this question, which is one of the reasons why it's not a dichotomous key, um, is which group best describes your plant? In other words, is it a woody plant? That is it a tree, shrub, a short woody plant called a subshrub or a liana, that's a woody vine. Is it an aquatic plant of some sort? Are you looking at a grass-like plant? Now these guys, just warning you, are difficult. Um, you only have to collect 25 plants. Um, if you want a challenge, choose a grass-like plant, um, but th those are harder. You have orchid and orchids and related plants. That means that these plants are um, what are called monocots. They have flower parts that are in multiples of threes, and the leaves for the most part have parallel veins. So they have veins that mostly run from the base of the leaf to the tip of the leaf in parallel to one another. There are ferns. The ferns, of course, and this includes horsetails, quillworts, lycopods, and other relatives. You'll get familiar with these guys as we go through the class. But these are things that reproduce themselves by spores. In other words, they don't produce any flowers, and they don't produce real fruits. And then you have all other flowering non-woody plants. And I think that most of you guys are going to be trying to identify these guys. So let's start with this plant group. Let's just say we have a plant that um, is a flowering non-woody plant. Okay, when you click on that selection, it'll ask you um, another question. Okay, it'll say, is your plant in one of these subgroups? Okay, so does your plant look like it could be a daisy? or in the daisy or sunflower family, okay? And it actually describes some of the key characteristics of um, plants in the Asteraceae family. This is gonna be common. You'll have a lot of these guys. Um, but do you have an, a plant, an herbaceous plant with alternate leaves? Or do you have an herbaceous plant with leaves that are arranged opposite one another? Okay, so that's a pretty easy question to answer. We're gonna go just for, um, example sake with an herbaceous plant that has alternate leaves. That's going to be the most common type of plant. So what the website is going to do at this point is it's going to load some questions that you will answer to narrow down the number of possible hits um, for the plant that you're trying to identify. Okay. So it tells you there are 959 possible matches for plants, flowering plants that are herbaceous and have alternate leaves. Okay, so what I do is at this point I say continue. Now it has a series of basic questions here. Okay, and it's great because if you don't have flowers, you can still narrow down your search uh, by indicating leaf types. You can narrow down your search by in indicating fruit 
types or fruit lengths. And one of the things that I find really useful is the first thing I answer is the New England state. Um, because we're, most of you guys are going to be identifying plants from New Hampshire. So we can select New Hampshire. And that takes our possible hits down from 900 and something to 500 and something, which is a lot better. So the, um, you can answer a variety of these, uh, these questions here, whichever ones you can answer. Um, I suggest you go ahead and do that. Um, you can also get more questions. So for example, if you only have leaves and fruits and you're still trying to narrow down your search, you can say, well, I only want questions that relate to fruits or seeds. And I only want questions that, uh, that uh, refer to leaves. But see, you can search, you can say, oh, I want to select a scent, et cetera, and so forth. Okay, and so it'll get you more questions um, if, you, if you need them. So what you do is you answer these questions, it'll narrow things down. So let's say, you know, we have a fruit type and we're gonna say um, the fruit is fleshy, so it's a little berry or something. Okay, and you'll see how it's narrowed down the number of species. At any point in time, as you're narrowing down your possible hits, you can search through photographs. So you can page down and look at the flowers for the different species that are possible hits given the criteria you've entered so far. Now, one of the things that I found really, really cool about this website is you can say, well, you know what, I don't even have flowers. So flowers aren't gonna do me much good, but you can load pictures of fruits. So you can go back, you can go down and say, oh yeah, okay, my fruit looks just like this, or my fruit looks just like this. And, um, or say, this shouldn't be the case, but if you um, only have leaves, remember all of your plants should have some sort of reproductive material on them. Leaves, flower, uh, excuse me, flowers, fruits, or spores. Um, but you can just search by leaf type. You know, what do the leaves actually look like? And it'll show you the leaves of the different species that are possible hits for your mystery plant. Okay, I'm gonna go back to fruits really quickly. All right, now, so let's say that we have something that looks a lot like sarsaparilla, um, which probably a lot of you guys will collect this one, or some species related to it. So let's say we've, we think, well, we, you know, we could have this Aralia hispida. What you can do is it uh, bring up, if you click on it, it'll bring up a window with some basic characteristics. But what's beautiful about this website is when you go to the species page. And once you go to the species page, it gives you a little, you know, a few more facts, but what I find most helpful on this website are these pictures. So look, it shows you pictures of the leaves, it'll show you pictures of the flowering nodes, you, you can see the plant from a distance, you can see the plant, the close-up of the different types of inflorescence structures. It's an extremely useful tool, okay? So I think that um, for you guys, if you can just play around with this website a little bit, it's going to be of tremendous help to you in identifying your plants. So remember after you've either used your Newcomb key, the GoBotany website, or if you've used Gleason and Cronquist, remember, don't forget, the last step is you for, for you to check your specimen against an herbarium specimen in the Keene State College herbarium. Remember, that is the last definitive way for you to say, you know what, this is exactly what I have. Good luck, guys. Talk to you soon.